This video is sponsored by me and Witch Song for the Persephone Death Reborn Kickstarter, which is in its last hours right now. I've been using this brush wrong for five years, and I bet you have too. Whether you're slap chopping, dry brushing, or painting an entire model, here are the two secrets you need for better miniature painting using a domed brush. Dry brushing has been around forever, but in its classical form, it tends to leave a dusty, striped mess. But if you're up to date on the latest dry brushing techniques, you know the magic of wetting your brush before you begin painting. Wetting your brush allows you to create a smoother, more even finish without the dusting or harsh lines left behind by a classical dry brush. However, this new technique rarely works out for me. But before I show you the way that I like to do it, let's go over the basics. First, you need a sponge. My sponge is a hair donut purchased from the dollar store, which you can learn to make here. Add a few drops of water to your sponge, shake the container, then dip your brush into your sponge, and then dip it into the paint. Remove the excess paint from your brush on a texture palette and then apply it to your model. But like I said, that usually produces worst results for me. So let's talk about what I like to do instead. The process is almost the same, we are just changing the order of the steps. First, dip your brush ever so slightly into your paint. Using a drier paint is best. Something like Chimera or Army Painter instead of Pro Acryl or Reaper. Then, dab 75% of the paint off your brush onto a piece of plastic, texture, palette, whatever. Just not a paper towel. Then dip it into your sponge. Remove the excess paint from your texture palette and then test it on the back of your hand. You want the lightest, softest application, just a light dusting of color. Then test it out someplace inconspicuous on your model. For example, I like to test it on the back leg, not on the pauldron. Once you have achieved that super smooth application, begin applying it to the rest of your model. Move your brush in tight circular motions over your model with just the softest of touches. I prefer to build up my color slowly over applying a single heavy coat. If you mess it up, that's okay. We can go over it again with a second coat. This technique can appear splotchy the first time around, especially on large flat areas like a pauldron. If that happens, I recommend removing a little bit more paint from your brush as well as building up layers slowly. Eventually you should be able to go over and hide any patchiness. Allow your paint to dry before you go back over a previously painted area. There is nothing worse than pulling up still wet paint, especially if your application had been perfect before. Before we continue, I have to tell you about the amazing Kickstarter that I helped create along with Witch Song Miniatures. Persephone Death Reborn is the most badass and gorgeous model I've ever seen. The miniature comes pre-supported and includes an illustrated digital stat block for 5e. The base Kickstarter also includes an undead bear, undead stag, but since all of the stretch goals have been completed, you get access to so much more. Quickly, before you run out of time, go support this Kickstarter right now following the link in my description box. All right, back to painting. Removing the paint from your brush is so important. Classically, you remove your paint on a paper towel, but paper towels absorb water and paint from your brush, which is part of why dry brushing used to appear dusty. Previously, I talked about turning my glass palette from Red Grass Games into a texture palette, and while that worked, this is so much better. Using a tray from the dollar store, I hot glued about a dozen different bits and pieces to my tray using bigger pieces like wings and shields and smaller pieces like heads and skulls. Fill in any extra areas with sand using white glue and allow it to dry overnight. Then, prime your texture palette. 
because of how large my texture palette is, I'm using a mixture of my black primer and black craft paint mixed with water. And that's it. Why is this great? It removes paint so much better than my glass palette without absorbing the paint from the brush, giving me the step up I need for better dry brushing. If you want to make your dry palette multifunctional, then you should prime the palette in black. Priming our texture palette black and then going back over it with a white dry brush will allow us to create a testing palette where we can test the colors, the consistency, and the intensity and opacity of washes and contrast paints. As a side note, I also recommend doing a quick slap chop on any lids you have for your contrast paints or speed paints so that you have a better idea of each color without having to test them every time. All right, just a quick one from me today. Thanks so much, and remember to go check out Persephone on Kickstarter. All right, I'll see you next time.